Auburn always, for some reason, every season gets up to play Alabama. It doesn't matter how bad they are, they, you know, what have you, they're always ready. Florida, in the same way, gets up to play Tennessee. So how do you see that, or do you see that affecting this game going forward this weekend for the balls? Well, I, look, I think both teams are going to be up for it. I mean, I think Florida is going to be up for it. I mean, you know, might look at a little bit of, well, South Florida looking ahead. I, you know, look, both are going to be up for it. I mean, it's Florida, Tennessee. Um, yeah. Look, if you go back in the history of Florida, Tennessee, um, and I'm talking, let's just go 90s on – Florida was just better. I mean, when Florida and Tennessee were the two best programs in the conference, it was clearly Florida one and Tennessee two. And that game, and in, in, we play very early, decided the East. It decided basically who's going to win the SEC. And at that time, it decided who was still in the race for the BCS. You know, I mean, that's that's kind of what it meant. And just Florida was better, and and Spurry was a was a better coach than than and uh, than Philip. And he could really, I mean, Tennessee was physical. They, in, in Florida, with a lot of talent, could match him. Tennessee won a lot on talent at that time. And Florida was just better. And Florida, you know, Tennessee at that time played a lot of man coverage. Florida took advantage of it. Speaking of crossing routes and being able to manipulate, they did a tremendous job. And they won most of the time. So I think they were just better. I think they were up for it. A lot of it, too, Amanda, you, you know the history, and Dave does as well. Steve Spurrier was from East Tennessee, and he wasn't recruited. But, well, they didn't throw the football to Tennessee. So he goes down to Florida because, you know, now he will use it as a chip. Well, they didn't recruit me. And, you know, anyway, would it? so he used that as a chip on his shoulder. I mean, Steve lived with the chip on his shoulder. I mean, he still does. I mean, he makes a turn on the back nine, and he's got a chip on his shoulder about something. He's just that, he's just that way. So I think that has a lot to do with it. I think going forward, it's going to be interesting. Um, I, I'll say it again. I think Tennessee's in a good position to take advantage of Florida now because I, I don't know if Tennessee's going to have the advantage roster-wise over Florida in two years or three years. A year, maybe. But this year... Tennessee's definitely got an, a personnel advantage, and I'm curious to see how they're able to handle that. It was 24 years ago today, not to take away from this day in sports history, that Tennessee beat Florida at home in 1998. And the famous call by John Ward, Ward pandemonium reigns. <laughs> and it was such a, an incredible call. And I still remember that, and I, re I remember um, – you might remember Steve Johnson, who was the defensive back who caught, <clears throat> caught the interception at the national championship game to really close the deal. And Steve was a broadcasting major, and I remember going on the sidelines and thinking just how fortunate Tennessee was because Florida had a couple of fumbles inside the five-yard line yeah. about the score. And I got a big sweaty hug from Steve Johnson – and people tearing up the field and but still you go back and if you stack those teams one to 85 and tennessee fans are going to get mad at me tennessee was fortunate to win that game florida was the more talented team the 185 one to 85 i'm i'm sorry that's just a fact yeah well florida had florida had really good defenses they had a lot of talent tennessee had good defenses they had a lot of talent um Florida could run it. Florida could throw it. Tennessee couldn't throw it. And and they didn't have much of a passing game. They weren't very well coached on that side of the ball most of the time. I thought Cutcliffe, when he was there in his stints, they were better. They were more creative. And I thought they he got more out of the offense. But, but they just weren't as good because Spurrier would attack, attack, attack. And, and Phillip was a little more conservative. Well, that, you know, and Philip would always say, well, we won all, a whole lot of games over here doing that. and Because he, <laughs> he had better talent. Philip won games in February, signing day. Th there wasn't a lot of um, strategic ingenuity there. So when the talent level was, was relatively close, they lost. I mean, you, you can go back and Tennessee would play a Memphis. They played sometimes a Vanderbilt. They played some people. They would. 
you know, it would take them a while to separate. It was their style. I'm not saying that they didn't want to win big. They just didn't explode on you. They had to wear you down, run the football. That's what they did. Well, against against Florida, Florida would get some points on you, and Tennessee would have to match points in most of those games, and they just couldn't do it. And they just couldn't do it. They weren't made that way. So they weren't made to win those type of games. You mentioned in this game, they were able to do it. They were able to play well enough. And in most of the games, it was Tennessee that made those mistakes because they were playing left-handed. You know, Florida, you know, made mistakes. And Tennessee took advantage of it. And, and, and I think Florida did leave some points on the field. But they were, they were obviously very happy. You always know when the game, when, when you rush the field, I, I always say this, and it's a, it's a good example and it's a good lesson to learn. You don't want to be the type of program that rushes the field yeah. after you win a big game. You want to be the type of program that the opponent rushes the field after they beat you because then it's a big deal. And I, I just think at that point, it just was a big deal for Tennessee to beat Florida. Because it was like a monkey off the back of Philip. A big, it was a gorilla. He had a pound gorilla off his back. Hey, wait, it, it, his legacy is completely different if they don't win that game. And not only do you not want your fans to run on the field necessarily, you don't want your fans to dig up chunks of turf, which Tennessee fans did. And I was like, this is Shield Watkins field. Let's not do this. But anyway, ChrisLandryFootball.com. You can check out Chalk Talk, brought to you by Craft Treats, The Mattress Place, and Owl's Nest Barbecue on our YouTube channel. And really pleased uh, to share the fact that we're going to team up with Chris, and Chris is going to have just an enormous amount of content on our YouTube channel. And I can't wait. And I've got some surprises for you, Chris, uh, a little bit later to, uh, to fancy things up that I think you'll like. So I, I will talk to you here in just a little bit and we certainly appreciate the time people need to go to landryfootball.com to learn more about football than anybody you know that's just the way it works that's it thank you chris